good afternoon. Um, I'm Farboud, and I'm technical lead at Security Compass, and, I'm, and it's my honor and pleasure to have a chance to speak at AppSec USA again. Uh, the topic that we are um, presenting today is uh, both useful and interesting, and it's based on a few months of research that we had, we've had at Security Compass. Um, uh, a little bit about myself, I have a background in electrical engineering, computer engineering, and I've done a PhD on uh, analysis of voice print and other biometrics for um, security and criminological application. I've had, I have uh, presented my research results in different conferences, including IEEE conferences, uh, crime science conferences, and um, security conferences. Uh, it's, uh, as I said, my honor to speak here, and uh, I hope that you, we can share some of our insights that we have gained over the past few months working on privacy aspects uh, on how to integrate privacy according to GDPR uh, with the um, SDLC and software development lifecycle. Um, it's also, my, I'm really delighted to pr present this topic with uh, my colleague Mina. Okay. I mean, I do want to uh, introduce yourself. Um, you my to... name is Mina Miri and um, I'm an application security researcher at Security Compass. Um, I've been working in IT field for several years, been doing software development and security analysis. Uh, I have my master's in IT security and bachelor of engineering in IT business. Farbod and I worked on several AppSec projects together and this is one of the projects we worked on uh, together for several months and I hope you like it. Um, so we are with Security Compass. Security Compass is also a company that is um, active in many domains of security and uh, we have different divisions including advisory training and we have a landmark pro uh, product that is SD Elements and it's an ASRTM solution. ASRTM is a, um, word, is a term that is coined by Gartner and you can look it up. Um, so let's uh, go to the um, core of the presentation but before we start, um, can you tell by show of hand how many of you um, in your company and organization process data from EU citizens, even if it's only one person. Very good. And how many of you have active GDPR projects now? And how many of you uh, have read GDPR, are familiar with the content of GDPR? Uh, read at least half of you. Okay, so really good audience, I think. Like, um, we can, so feel free to ask any question. You, you can interrupt us any time that you want and ask questions we, because we want to um, gain as much as possible from this presentation. Uh, so this is the overview of the whole presentation and we start from regular, so we have a very uh, novel and innovative approach to uh, understanding the uh, text of the security regulations and uh, using the, the different qualitative research methods to um, integrate that into, tech, into software development lifecycle. We start from regulation mandates and we start to tag the text. The tagging ideas come from the quality of research and open coding, axial coding, and selective coding. And then after we tag the research, we use the tags for two purposes, for generation of tasks and for auditing uh, that all of the activities that are done all together make us compliant to GDPR. So I will, um, you don't have to know all of the elements of this chart now, but when, at the end of presentation, you will be familiar with all of these elements and the whole presentation is about this slide. So this is a roadmap for the whole presentation. So we'll start from GDPR and then um, I'll pass the presentation to Mina after this, but uh, these are the important facts about GDPR. Um, so based on the quick survey, I think that most of you are familiar with these facts. Uh, most of, mo more than half of the companies, IT companies use Agile. And there are some challenges that I, I'll explain throughout the presentation. What are the challenges um, for um, marrying Agile, Agile methodologies with um, privacy impact assessment, with data protection impact assessment, and in whole with the spirit of GDPR. Also, GDPR fines are huge and uh, unbearable for most of the IT companies, small IT companies. Uh, GDPR fines could go up to 20 million euro or 2% or 4% of the uh, annual revenue. And then the other important fact 
uh, significant fact is that um, IAPP, International Association, Association of Privacy Professional, predicts that by the end of, by 2018, we'll, ne we'll need 75,000 data protection officers world worldwide, uh, which is uh, a good opportun job opportunity for lots of people, but at the same time, staggering for uh, IT companies. A lot of IT companies, a lot of people that I speak with, I speak to, uh, don't even know that they need DPO. If you are doing something that is um, related to processing um, personal data from customers, then you need to appoint and assign a DPO. I believe the next slide is for you, right? So what is GDPR, as some of you might know? It lays down rules relating to processing of personal data and the free movement of personal data. It protects data subjects who are in the union, regardless of whether the processing take place in union or not. So data subjects are usually the users or customers or the data owner of a system. GDPR requires 75,000 data protection officers worldwide, according to IAPP study. It's approximately 920 in Canada, and 9,000 in US. Data protection officer is a person with expert knowledge of data protection law and practices, uh, according to recital 97 in GDPR. Their main responsibility is to monitor internal compliance with GDPR. Um, in applying GDPR into a SDLC of a product, we are going to address two main challenges. Uh, how to build privacy and data protection into software development and operation lifecycle, and how to audit and ensure compliance. So now I'm going to hand it back to Farbot for software development lifecycle. Uh, so I'm sure that you're also familiar with all of the approaches to software development lifecycle. I remind myself that what we were talking about, we were talking about GDPR and how to marry that with um, agile methodologies. And we start from the traditional ways that we manage the software requirements in a uh, software project. Uh, so the, um, you're familiar with waterfall, the older method, waterfall, iter iterative and um, spiral met methods. In waterfall, um, all the, the next phase always starts after one phase ends. So we start from requirement, we extract a requirement, and then we have design, we have architecture and design, we start implementation, and then we do the testing and verification and maintenance. The problem with this approach is that you have to do the privacy impact assessment at the end of verification or at the, when you want to deploy the software. Um, and then it's, it's too late for the software company to remedy something, to fix something, if they realize that something, part of the product is not compliant with some of the regulation it, that it has to be compliant with. Um, so under contrary, the new uh, approach to software development is agile. So in agile, the work is broken down into epics and in the, into user stories and tasks. Epics are larger, a piece of work, body of work that can be broken down into, into user stories. So you, you break down the project into epics, and then you break down the epics into user stories. The user stories are written, usually written in the language of customer, and then um, you have tasks. You have a small task um, that um, make you achieve the goals of the user story. So this diagram shows um, the whole concept of Agile. So you have epics, you have two epics. This is the whole project. You have epic A, epic B, you have broken down epic A to story A, story B, and each of the stories, uh, in order to be realized, you have to do a number of, you have to finish a number of tasks. Uh, what is the problem with this approach? The problem with this approach is that it's challenging for privacy impact assessment. This is an active and live project. When I was, uh, whenever we were presenting in IAPP, International Privacy Professional at Toronto, um, one of the questions that we got and all of the other presentation and, uh, got, presenters got and uh, showed that it was an active uh, question in the field is that 
uh, how do you do privacy impact assessment if you're using agile, agile methodologies? Usually there's, in agile methods, there's not enough documentation that the privacy experts can go and an analyze. And then each, each developer is doing a part of the job and is, doing, is performing one task and no one knows when the whole pro product is out, um, all of the requirements of all of the mandates of the regulation uh, are met. So this is an active challenge. Uh, we hope uh, that we have found some answer to this question. Uh, so this slide shows, um, a uh, it shows JIRA, a tool. You may use other tools for um, managing the tasks and uh, stories. It shows different stories, epics and tasks. You see the epics on the, on the left, and then you have uh, two, two tasks, one a story, and then people that you assign tasks to. So another, nothing very significant about it. So what are the challenges? This is, we're repeating these challenges throughout the presentation. What are the two challenges? What are the two problems that we want to solve? So there are two possible situations that you are in. One situation is that you know that you have to comply with GDPR, but you have nothing. You have no tasks, you have no user stories. You only know that you have to comply with GDPR and you have a project. So in that case, you have to generate your own tasks and you have to generate your own stories. So that is one scenario. The other scenario is that you have some ASRTM solution, like our, our solution, ST Elements. There are lots, for example, you, you, might, you may use another solution, like you may use ASVS, or you may, you may have a list of controls, list of tasks, but you, you know that you're doing all of these, but you cannot make sure that if, even if you do this, you're compliant, you, you have full compliance with GDPR or any privacy regulation or any security regulation. So there are two different situations. One is that you want to generate adequate tasks. The other is that you have a number of tasks, you have a number of privacy and security tasks, and you want to make sure that in total you are compliant. Um, so the main ch first challenge is how to identify user story and tasks, and the second one is how to ensure that GDPR requirements are met. You know, as I said, um, the whole agile methods and uh, sprints, the, wor the work in agile methods are done in sprints sprint of two weeks to six weeks that, you know, um, make this challenging. The other points that I want to draw your attention to is that usually there are four types of, so we want to generate tasks, we want to generate stories, but we have, to, I want to draw your attention to the fact that we're, there are four types of tasks that you have to look for in the, in the, in the project. Uh, architecture and design, I don't think there's anything very special about it. I think you understand. But feature requirement, the most important point is that you have to distinguish between feature requirement and development constraint. The feature requirement, if I want to give you, give you an example, for example, you know that you need to generate an authentication page. You need to have a login page. This is a feature requir requirement. This is a one-time task that you, do, that you do and it's done. But there are different type of security tasks and security controls that are recurring. You have to do that. This is like a second habit for the developers. If I want to give an example of those type of tasks, that could be uh, setting HTTP only on session cookies, or uh, sending or using bind variables when you create SQL statements. So these type of tasks are recurring. Th these are like non-function requirements and they're really hard to track. And the final type of requirements are testing requirements. So these are four types of activities that we're looking for in the project. And then um, this, when we talk about tasks, it sometimes creates confusion. We have a list of privacy tasks and security tasks, and we'll, at the end of this presentation, we'll give you a list of privacy and security tasks. But you may have some other tasks that have some privacy and security ramifications. As I've explained here, uh, so we have privacy tasks like salt and hash store, password set secure flag on session cookies. So these are security and privacy specific tasks. But you may also have some other tasks that you don't know if they have privacy and security ram ramification and effect, but uh, they do. Uh, so we talk about the de development phases, and also there are some uh, other phases after development is done, uh, deployment phases that uh, are not that standardized as the development phases, but 
uh, we, try, we try to break them down into provisioning, configuration, and deployment, and support and maintenance. Okay, so we talked about uh, GDPR, we talked about um, uh, software development methodologies, and then we want to introduce the idea of tagging. What is tagging, and why do we need tagging? So as I explain, explained earlier, uh, the idea of tagging comes from the uh, qualitative research. In qualitative research, we have to um, analyze and process a long amount of text. And uh, we want to build hypotheses based on the text. And one of the questions that is in the field is that how you can objectively uh, create hypotheses from the text. And we have similar problems in the um, analysis of the compliance regulations. Analysis of compliance regulations, you have to, you have to understand mandates and you have, to do so, you have to perform some automated processes based on the mandate. So we got the idea of tagging from qualitative research. And what we did was uh, that we went through all of the mandates of compliance uh, GDPR as one of the compliance regulations. We did that for other uh, compliance, uh, for other security regulations as well. And then we tried to assign some tags. And um, I didn't, we didn't want to elaborate much on that on the other side, like academic part of that process. But usually, there are three phases that you go and assign tags, and then you come and refine tags, and then you classify them. Um, they're called like open coding, axial coding, and um, selective coding. But the um, simple form of that is that you identify tags, you uh, create a list of security and privacy requirements, you assign tags to control, you go back and assign tags to regulations, and then you map the controls out to the regulations based on that. So this, is, uh, this shows that you have a layer of tasks and activities in the project, you have a layer of tags, you create the layer of tags based on the regulations, and then through the tag, you connect the regulations to the task. A tags acts as an abstraction layer between the compliance regulation and the task that you have. So if you remove that regulation and replace it with some another regulation, you still have the tags and you can automate the process that you, you have to get from the task to the regulation mandates. Just let me, yes. So as I explained, the tags that you generate can serve two purposes. One is that the, you, you can uh, generate a number of privacy and security tasks and normal tasks from that. And then you can, assign, you can tag the tasks that you have in the project and in total see that you are compliant with the regulation and that. So there are two purposes for the task, generation and auditing. So the elements of tags are class and variance. We structured in a way to convey the purpose of a text somehow without uh, reading the whole text. Um, so it will be more clear in, with some examples. Here are the examples. Um, so as you can see, the class of tags are those words on the left before the col colon, and the variants are on the right side of it. For example, auditing, um, uh, we have two or more tasks with the same class, like auditing uh, with logging uh, variant and incident reporting. So we created a list of tags like this and um, to convey the purpose more clearly. So here is an example uh, of, for Article 7 of GDPR, which is talking about conditions of the consents. Uh, a part of it, it says the data subject shall have the right to withdraw his or her consent at any time. So I use the keywords, um, which is, I highlighted in this slide, um, to create the tag for it. So the class would be consent, and the variant would be consent accusation and withdrawal. To tag the tasks, we use the same technique. So I highlighted again the keywords of the task, and I created a tag, which is um, consent, accusation, and withdrawal. Uh, now I want to map the tasks to the regulation with the tag. So those tasks that are having the same tag, they will be mapped to the article with the same tag. So uh, we had this example in the previous slide. 
And now these tasks on the top will be mapped to Article 7 because they have the same tag. So, so far we've learned how to create tags and assign it to tasks and articles. Uh, now let's see how we can use this approach in an agile framework. Uh, so user stories are um, one of the main elements of agile frameworks. Um, as we explained before, they explain the feature of a system. The structure of a, a user story uh, is like the line in the bold in uh, this slide. Uh, so as an actor who usually is a user, customer, or an admin of a system, I want a feature in the software so that I can address my need. For example, a user story for Article 7 of GDPR would be something like, as a user, I want to be able to accept or withdraw consent to processing my PII so that I can have control over my um, PII, how is it processed. Um, after creating user stories for each article, we tag them using the technique we explained before and map the task to the user stories using the same tag. This process can be automated uh, using something like a Python script. Uh, so as you can see, uh, for user story for GDPR Article 7 uh, using the tag constant accusation and withdrawal um, are mapped to the privacy task that, you, that they are under the same tag. Um, at this stage, um, a bunch of user stories uh, with the same tags can be grouped under the same epic. Um, so they are uh, following the same goal. In this table, two user stories with different actor, users and supervisory authority um, can be, um, they, they can be mapped grouped under the same epic, uh, which is carry out breach notification. So, I read out the user stories uh, for the incident reporting. As a user, I want to be notified immediately about the consequences of a data breach so that I can protect myself from any physical and financial damage. Uh, so someone else as a supervisory authority, um, can, they want to be notified immediately after a data breach so that they can prevent further damage and provide safety and security to data subjects. So uh, these two user stories, they are following the same goal. Um, and the epic for that would be carry out data breach notification. Um, using the concept we explained so far, we created an agile GDPR template like the table in this slide. And the elements of um, agile framework group together using the tagging uh, approach. Uh, this example shows the Agile GDPR template for Article 16, which is about user access to their data for editing and updating purposes. It has the user story explaining what feature is needed and the privacy task to address the requirements of creating secure feature. Um, so this is for both. Yeah. Uh, so we tag the mandates of regulation, and then we tag. We had a, we either had a list of privacy and security tasks, or we generated the task based on that. And this uh, slide shows an um, our agile GDPR template. So this is used for generation. Suppose that you have nothing, and you want to generate a number of tasks that makes you compliant with GDPR. What? How do we go about it? Uh, so here we started from tasks. We had the we found the older article and recital. We grouped all of the articles and recital that were, were related to this task, and then we started to create the some tasks and um, some user stories based on that. So you can see the description of the user user story that is uh, related to, that is tied to that tag. So we say that as a user, I want to be able to edit and update my information in system so that I can ensure the accuracy of and have control over my data. And then you may have your own task on there. We had a, a control and security, a, a repository of security and privacy controls and assign that. So, uh, and assign that, those uh, controls to the, to the tags. So this slide shows uh, the report that we are sharing with you. So we have a, 
we have uh, shared the whole uh, report with you as a, hand, as a handout. If you go to that link, you can download this table. So uh, we are giving you the tags, we are giving you the user stories, and we are giving you all of the mandates that are related to you, that, those user stories. So even if you don't want to use the tagging, if you don't want to uh, uh, deal with the details of this presentation, you can use th these user stories as the building block, as the stepping stone for creating your own Agile project. Um, but there is another side, as I, as I explained, there is another side to using tags, and that is you can use tags for verification and for auditing. So if you're, like, I tried to show that even if you're using the traditional tools that uh, people use with, uh, for, for management of um, Agile projects, you can uh, use the idea of tagging. Here I've tried to show that you can use labels in Jira to assign some privacy tags to the task. At the end of the project, uh, the security expert then, or someone that want, wants to do the PIA, privacy impact assessment, or data protection in, impact assessment, can go to the project and look at all of the tasks that have some privacy tags and then group them together and see if the, uh, they are compliant with the uh, requirements of GDPR. This is another report from SD Element. Uh, we have all these reports in SD Element. Um, so this is a task level compliance report. So here we have, because we have a privacy, a list of privacy and security tasks, uh, we have assigned those tasks and here you can see that we have article and recital number and we, we, can, we show all of the tasks that have to be performed before um, achieving the full compliancy. So let's go back to the diagram that I showed you in the beginning. So we have regulation mandates, we extracted some tags, we refined tags, and we use the tags to generate user stories. We have shared the user stories with you. If you go and check the, download the handout, you have all the user stories. So you can, you can start from there, you can build your own Agile project. The user stories can be broken into tasks from there. You will have your own tasks. Or you can, you can use the tags for auditing, so if you have your own task, you, have, you just need to label and tag the task, and then um, you'll have task level compliance report, and if you're using the Agile template, you'll have Agile GDPR template. And we also have a, um, a case yeah. study. So we put all this idea into a real case study, uh, which is a smart uh, bracelet. Uh, to implement the Agile GDPR framework for smart bracelets. In this picture, you can see the activities of smart bracelets. Um, they can collect uh, PII data from users, such as their health data, for example, heartbeat, height, weight, and all those uh, PII. Uh, they can collect the location data and upload them to their server. Uh, they can transfer this data to other devices with uh, transmitters such as Bluetooth. They also usually have a web interface for processing uh, this data and display, um, display them. All these uh, activities, if provided to EU residents, are subject to GDPR. These are some of the applicable GDPR rules for this case study. Uh, so, it, mm, they should get consents from users, so they, um, the Article 7 of GDPR can be applied. Uh, they should also um, give the rights of access to the data subjects who are usually the users of the uh, device. And, um, users should also be able to remove their data from the, um, their device or uh, from the, their server. So Article 17 is talking about the right to erasure. Um, and they, any data pre breach should be uh, communicated to the data subjects according to Article 34. There are many more, but we are just focusing on this for the example. Um, using the tagging approach, we create a tag for the applicable articles, for example, for Article 7. We created a consent, accusation, withdrawal, and for Article 15, access information. 
uh, for Article 17, we created the tag removal and erasure. And for Article 34, we created audit incident reporting. Um, so this is the user uh, story creation part and um, tagging. Uh, so for each article of the GDPR, we are going to create a user story. Uh, so, for example, for Article 15, which was talking about the uh, conditions of the consent, a user story would be, as a data custodian of a sm smart bracelet organization, I only want authorized users to access personal data so that I can protect the privacy of the users. Um, and the tag for this article would be data protection and authentication to convey the purpose of this uh, article. Uh, so for Article 34, as an example, a user story would be, as a smart bracelet user, I want to be notified immediately about a data breach so that I can protect myself from any physical and financial damage. And the tag would be auditing and incident reporting. Um, in this step, we create a, or map privacy tasks to the user stories under the same tag. As you can see in this table, the user story for incident reporting is, as a smart bracelet user, I want to be notified immediately about the data breach so that I can protect myself from any physical and financial damages. Um, so using the tagging, we can um, um, map the privacy tasks in each phase such as, for example, architecture and design phase, a privacy task would be design and monitoring system for IoT devices and lock critical incident. And in the requirement, it would be um, implement monitoring of IoT devices and lock critical uh, incidents, and the testing phase of software development to verify the activities of IoT devices or whether they are monitored. So using the tagging approach, we can map the um, privacy tasks to the user stories. So in this table, uh, we create an epic for the user stories following the same goal and are assigned to the same tag. Uh, for th this case study, uh, the user sto uh, st stories, as I explained before, for a smart uh, bracelet user under the incident uh, reporting tag, um, they have two different actors to different the user story, but they are using the same tag, so, and they are following the same goal, so the EPIC would be a carry out data breach notification. So, uh, so I think you're familiar with these reports. I think uh, we have only a few minutes. Uh, let's go to the summary slide. So uh, GDPR, you have to comply with GDPR if you have data from US, from UK, uh, from EU, citizens or residents by May 2018. Uh, we showed that tagging is useful for auditing compliance and for generation of tasks, and we share the user stories with you. And then we, you can have uh, a compliance report based on the available repository of task and, um, tasks and user stories. And also user, user stories could be a basis for agile methods. Um, so you can download the handouts from this link and um, you can also email me or Mina uh, if you had any questions or you wanted the handouts. And uh, if you have any questions now, we'll be very happy to take them. Yeah. Oh, it wants to I ask think there's one question. Uh, early in the presentation, Talk a little bit about that study, how they came to that conclusion, and do they realistically expect 9,000 American companies to hire data protection officers? Uh, so the article is available. You can you can read that on IAPP, International International Association of Privacy Professional. It explains what is the basis for that calculation. I what? IAPP, International Association of Privacy Professionals. And we had a link to that article, I guess, on the yes. on the slide. Um, if you want, you can email me. I can send you this slide, and the link is there. Okay. Okay.
Thank you very much. Thank you.